Hello 7 Days to Die modding fans, this is Zith, and today we're going to show you a brief tutorial on how to create a simple object in Unity and prepare that object for exporting into 7 Days to Die and then to actually export that file for use. So let's go ahead and get started. To, first you need to have a copy of Unity. The most current version of Unity that actually works with the export process is Unity version 5.3.8 patch level 2, so that's 5.3.8 P2. You can find that version of Unity in the Unity website under its archives and look under there, it'll give you all the old versions of Unity and find that one, download it, and give it an install. Once it's installed, when you start it up, it'll ask if you want to load an old project or create a new one. So go ahead and create a new project, name it anything you want, and let it start up. When that happens, you'll see exactly what you're seeing on the screen right now. Now I've included a little uh, text file here just for the purposes of showing you this link. You will also need a script file which is found on our GitHub and it's called exportassetbundles.cs for c -sharp script. And we've put it in a little zip file to make it easy for you to download. So when you download that when you get a chance and unpack it and put the .cs file on your desktop because we'll be needing that in a few minutes. So let's get started. We have an empty scene here. We need to create a simple object to put in the scene. So to do that you go under this hierarchy section here and anywhere in this gray area right click, click on 3D objects or highlight 3D object, move over to cube and click. That'll put a very simple cube in the center of the scene. Now this object here which is called cube by default that names fine for us for now uh, but you could name it anything that you want. It has properties in the inspector here and you can see all of these right here. Now the, of immediate importance is under this transform area that shows you the position X, Y, and Z coordinates of this object whether it has any rotation or not and its relative scale size. By default, this cube is the same as a block in Seven Days to Die. It's basically um, three feet by three feet by three feet, or one meter by one meter by one meter. And so if you were to somehow put it in the game as it is right now, it would look the same size as a wood block or a concrete block. But it doesn't look like much, and we need to change that. So let's go ahead and put a texture on that, make it look like something. Um, we can do that a couple of different ways. Um, normally you would go to something like the asset store and download some pre-made textures of like brick and stone and what have you. But for our purposes, to show you that you don't really have to do that, I'm going to go ahead and import a texture that I already made. And you do that by clicking on assets, import a new asset. Now I on my desktop I put a little JPEG file called hello world. So I'm going to double click that and it will import it down here into my assets area. To use that asset I simply click on it and drag and I can either drag it to the object here cube or drag it and drop it on the object which is how I prefer to do it. And as you can see now it's no longer white it says hello world. And it's also put it on all sides and you rotate around and see it put it on all six sides of the block. So that's good. A little more interesting. So let's move on from there. We now have to tell Seven Days to Die a little bit more about this block if we want to interact with it in the game world. To do that, you have to put tags on. So to do that, you go over and click on the object. Make sure you're on it so you get the inspector for that object. And you notice it's untagged. Well, if you click here, you see the list of tags that you can, you can get. Now I've already added in some of the tags that I need, but this is how you would do it. Let's let's go ahead and assume that the last tag here is game controller. We go to add tag. I'm simply going to get rid of all these. And so this is what you would see on a fresh install like you had. So we will click here and go add a tag. Now Tags for Seven Days to Die have to be in certain spots as far as we can tell. So the first thing to do is to click on the plus and it will put a basically empty tag here. It's, it says tag zero and it's called the label is new tag. Well that's fine. We're not aware that Seven Days to Die uses that tag, uh, tag zero. So we're going to go ahead and add a second tag. 
and it's called tag one. Now tag one is used for the new electrical system and it has to have a very specific label for it. So go ahead and highlight that and change it and it needs to be T underscore block with a capital B. The capitalization is important. You have to get this exactly right. So that's fine. We've now created tag one called T underscore block. Of most importance to this particular project that we're working on is tag two. So we click on the plus again and make tag two. We'll go ahead and highlight that label and change it and it needs to be T underscore mesh underscore B. Again, note the capitals, capital T, capital M, capital B. That has to be in tag number two. And that's used for when you um, say you want to pick this object up and you get that little E that comes up. That's what got this tag is what makes enables that function in seven days to die. So now we've got our tags in here. Let's go back and click on our object to get back to the inspector screen. And notice the tag is still untagged, but we can click next to it, go down to TMeshB, and select that. So now that is an addressable object. One other thing to note is when we created this cube, it the game um, automatically put a box collider in there. Uh, now colliders are what um, a property of this box of this object that the game will address whether you hit it with an arrow, whether you can walk through it or not. So you need to have a collider on your objects if you want them to be interactable in that with a collision sense. It was already provided for us, so we don't need to make any changes. But if you make your own objects from scratch, you will need to put a collider in in most cases. So we're getting really close now. We have an object. It is properly tagged. It is properly located. And so now we need to go ahead and package it up for export. To do that, come over here and click anywhere in this gray area and create a new object. But we're going to create an empty object by clicking on Create Empty. And here we have it. It calls it Game Object. I like to follow naming conventions, so I name this um, parent object that we've created, which will be our prefab containing object, the same name as the object that we created, but with the word prefab after it. So I'm going to rename it and name it cube, because that's the name of our object, and prefab, because that's what this container is, the prefab container. So now we have a new object, which is empty, nothing in it, called cube prefab. So the next step is to verify that this particular new object created was created in the right location, that it's all zeroed out. Sometimes after you, seven day, you use Unity for a while, making stuff for seven days to die. Other numbers get in here for, for some inheritance reason. I'm not sure why, but it's important to clean that out. The easiest way to do that is to come to this gear and click on it. And the first entry is reset, click reset, and that will zero all this and set it back to where you want it to be. So now this, we know that this container is located properly. We can then click on the object and drag it into the parent object. So now our object cube is a child object of the parent prefab container. And that's the way we want to set this thing up in this simple model like this. You can have other nesting layers in here. But for now, don't worry about that. It's simply a parent and a child. So we want to go ahead and do the export now. To do that, we need to take this prefab object and drag it down to our assets container. So it's down here. You notice when we do that, it makes a little picture of it called a cube prefab. It puts a big picture here to show you a little more detail what the prefab looks like. And if you click this little arrow next to it, it opens it up and shows you that inside of this parent cube prefab is the child the cube, which is at the end of the day what gets put in the game. So let's go ahead and, and take it to the next step. Let's, this is where you do your export from down here. And you do that by right clicking and there should be an option here to export, but it isn't. Now the reason for that is when I showed you before, we need this script file imported into this project for it to function. So let's go ahead and get that. You do that again, go to Assets, Import a New Asset, and there should be something called Export Asset Bundles on your desktop. You'll then double click on that, and after a moment it'll put that script file down here in the Assets folder. And there it is. There it is right there. So now when we right click this object, you notice we have another option in here. 
Currently, this old version of the script has two, vers two different um, options. You only ever use this first one, and on the new version of the script we're putting up on the GitHub, you'll only see this top one option, which is Build Asset Bundles from Selection Track Dependencies. You simply then click that, and it will pop up a Save menu, and it asks you where do you want to save it and what do you want to call it. I like to save to the desktop so that you could save directly to your game folders or whatever you want to do, but let's save to the desktop. And then give it a name, and my naming standard is I name it basically after the object that's in the container. So it would be cube.unity.3d. And I click Save, and that will save a copy to my desktop. And that's it. You've now exported your first object for imp importing into 7 Days to Die. Uh, if you have any questions, you can let us know in the forums. We're going to be making additional tutorials a little more advanced than this, but this should get you started. Have a great day.